You know what? I've already heard so many great things about Corsair keywords in the past, but since I never got to use one, I just couldn't probably judge it on my own. Briefly trying it in the store definitely did not help. But after what felt at least like half an eternity, I was finally able to get in contact with them and that allowed me to request the Corsair Strafe with MX Blue switches. Now, why did I go for blue instead of red or brown, which are the more commonly popular ones? And the simple answer therefore is that I've already used those two switches and even though I liked them quite a lot, it wasn't quite enough for me to switch just yet from my membrane keyboard. But I also couldn't ignore the fact that so many YouTubers, heavy typers and creators are recommending the MX Blue switch for its amazing clicky and also tactile feedback. And in this review, I'm going to tell you if that is true and if it's still good enough for gaming. So let's just throw this away and take a look at the keyboard itself. The first thing that I have to point out that is something that I don't like so much is this very thick and stiff cable with the two plugs at the one end. But that comes for a reason because we have a USB 2.0 hub at the front. And yes, I could now complain about it not being 3.0, but I definitely won't because it's just a peripheral and I will use it to plug in my mouse for. The next thing that I did not like so much is the case that we didn't have a wrist out of the box here and this is why typing was a little bit more fatiguing since you have to raise your arms quite high or maybe have them lifted but this can be solved quite easily if you just get something like this for example on Amazon for 10 bucks and this allowed me to have my hands raised just about enough so I could comfortably type on it for longer and I actually since you can see mine is raised a little bit towards the back use it the other way around not quite sure but that actually makes it even more so comfortable and maybe it is even better than the stock hand wrist rest because this one is soft and therefore very nice and cushioned but about the keyboard itself what I like is that we have big font because this makes it quite easy in the night to see it and it just looks quite pleasing to me we also have media keys here but that's not actually something really important because you can remap every key and I will show this later on in the software of course we have the button for the lighting and the lock key if you want to set that for the game so you won't get disturbed in that and overall I gotta say in terms of build quality it is really nice done because it feels heavy and very sturdy, very solid. It only flexes just a little bit. As you can see here, it is in terms of thickness. Of course, we have also feet on the bottom. Maybe not rubberized, but it wasn't really sliding off my table other anyways, since I have a mouse pad that takes care of that. And I definitely like that it is a little bit raised. The keys are absolutely nice in terms of place. And what is definitely the thing that I love the most is the clicky feedback, because let's just take a moment and look at this. And yes, it is exactly this what I love so much. This super nice tactile bump, but this click. At first, I didn't never like this click because a lot of people have a problem with it being very loud. But believe me, if you are someone who types a lot, you will exactly appreciate that fact because it gives you this amazing experience of typing so nicely. And I absolutely love this. The buttons feel very high quality. The rest feels very high quality. As you can see, we have some red underneath to accentuate the red lighting a little bit more, but I will go into that now in the software and the lighting effects. Okay, let's take a look at the software just so we can see what we get. First of all, what I would do is enable advanced so we have more options. Here we get the following ones. We can select the polling rate, as you can see, select the brightness and also choose a current layout. Obviously, I'm using German here. In the general settings, once again, you can change the language here for the software. And then we have check marks for start on system startup, enable SDK and show only connected device. If we now enter the main software here, you will see three main tabs. One is for actions, then one for lighting effects, which I will go into later, and then performance. So let's quickly cover that first. As you can see here, you can disable certain buttons, like for example, Alt Tab, Alt F4 and more. Can change the main lighting here for the indicators and also for the side lighting. And if we enter now the actions, you will see a lot of there are available records. You can do pretty much whatever you want. You can remap every key with so many options. You can once again create an action. And here we have options to set macros, text, remap the keys, media, timer, disable. And all of these have a lot of extra functions here as well. As you can see, you can have the key function for typing key, mouse button, shortcut, keystroke, set certain areas here for the numbers. And it's a really, really powerful software. Maybe not super convenient because, for example, on the Razer software, you set the button that you want to remap or something, and then choose the action. Here, whatever you have to do is set the actions and then specify which button it has to do. 
So this is a little bit more inconvenient, but it's very powerful and you can definitely pretty much do whatever you want with that. So I wouldn't worry about that. Once again, as I said, the lighting effect is something that I'm just going to talk about in a second. Okay, let's talk about the lighting effect here for a minute. And before I'm going to actually turn off the light and show them off, let me quickly explain how this actually works because at first I didn't get it at all and maybe it will help a few people that are as clueless as I was at the beginning. Of course, obviously still the first thing that we have to do is create an effect, so let's just do that. Then we have to choose one. We have the options between static, gradient, ripple, solid and wave. Let's select wave for now. And then, and this is the first thing that I struggled with, we have to choose or select a lighting area as you can see here you just drag around with your mouse to select that area so let's select the whole keyboard and then the next thing that you have to do is here with the plus signal insert a lighting object and once again and then you can drag this around to change the opacity and also the time of course along with the lighting time so let's for now take three seconds and the next option that we have of course is the brightness or the color if you have an RGB keyboard and then we can set the tail here with four lights for example velocity of 10 lights per second degrees and two sides so let's turn off the light and you can already see this working and this is just something that you have to get used to first because it works quite different as I've seen it in the past. It's definitely more powerful than on some other keyboards, but it's maybe not quite as user friendly because I didn't get any tutorial. Of course, there are guides or something like that available. But once you are past that, let's check the effects that we have. Of course, as I already showed off, we have the wave effect here. This is the one you can see here. The next effect that we have here would be ripple along with the options as you can see here for tail and velocity as well. And you can select a lot more or set a lot more of those objects and you can even combine more effects than one as you can see here i can easily just combine two of them or even three of them if i want to so it's very powerful as i said so let's for now check solid once again as you can see here not much is happening you can change of course the opacity the lighting and so on not really a really interesting effect but if you want that the next one would be gradient and all it does is change of obviously the gradient and the last one is actually the one that I would just use static because yeah, that's the one that I prefer. So as you can see, the lighting effects engine here is very powerful once you get behind how it works. So selecting the area and selecting the lighting time and all this. And once you have figured this out, you can really play around, toy a lot around with it and then pretty much set the lighting exactly to your preference. Now that we have covered the software and the lighting effects, Let's just switch to the pros and cons here. And I want to start off with solid build because this thing is made to last. I have no worries about it. This is there for years. Big letter font. I definitely liked it because at night, especially on Adobe Premiere, I still have to look up for a few buttons and this definitely helps me a lot. Along with, of course, the backlight. The side lighting maybe is just a gimmick, but it's definitely nice to look at at night. After all, it's clean and minimal. You maybe don't get a ton of extra function keys, but everything that should be there definitely is there. We also get the USB 2.0 hub, could be 3.0, but fine with me. The MX Blue switches and the loud and clicky noise is maybe a problem for a lot of people and that's why I have it in brackets. But this is exactly the one thing that attracts me so much to this keyboard because <laughs> as I said here, the amazing typing feedback, the sound and click, this is exactly what I was looking for because the typing experience for a long period of time is just so amazing. Maybe yes, I make still a little bit more typos than I do on a membrane or a more flat style keyboard, but it is worth the comp compromise for me and the longer I use it, the better I get because after three or four weeks, I already am almost on the same level. Still good for gaming. In my opinion, absolutely it is because I'm just a casual gamer and I didn't really notice too much of a difference, especially if I have my headphones on. I don't hear the click and the difference compared to MX Brown, just in terms of feel, isn't all that bad or that big. And maybe to a red, yes, it is noticeable and there are better ones for gamers. But it totally gets the job done, especially someone who mostly types on it. And then it's definitely worth it. Powerful software. Once you get used to it, it is amazing because you can pretty much adjust and customize the keyboard with all the remapping to your preferences. And this is something that is very particularly important for me since I have a Razer keyboard and that allows me to do just that. And for example, the Logitech G610 and 810 were much more limited in that regard. So I'm happy to see that. Now, let's get to the negative sides. As I said, no wrist rest. That can be solved by either buying a $10 additional wrist rest on your own or just along with the only red backlight issue, just get the Corsa Strafe with MX RGB blue keys because there you get the wrist rest and you get multicolor lighting. Pretty much solves it and I think it's definitely worth the extra 20 bucks. 
at least that's the difference in price of here. Very thick cable, I can't deny that. That is still something that I don't like so much, but once I have it nicely tucked away, I will be okay with that. And the software needs some setting in period, because as I said, especially at first, I did not know how the lighting works. I did not know how the action works. Once you figure it out, it's there. Now, to get to the conclusion, I will tell you a little bit of a story because my Corsair contacted, contact contacted me like after two weeks after I had this keyboard and he asked me how satisfied I am so far. And I said, I'm absolutely impressed by this amazing feedback. I love it. It gives me all the functions that I want. And with the wrist rest, it is typing on a really high level, very comfortable. And this or maybe at least something with MX Blues, which is exactly what I want. Maybe I would actually go for the MX RGB version because it has the wrist rest as well. And what he told me then is, you are aware of the fact that you can actually keep this one after the review. And I obviously wasn't aware of that. But of course, now you could think you just got it for free. That's why you will keep it. There is one thing that I have to mention though. Usually if I get something for free and if it's not good, I never tend to use it anymore. But just look back the last two or three weeks, you will see this keyboard in the background of every video. And as you can see, my Razer DevStalker is there in the back because I use it anymore. This is definitely the one that I will keep. But if you are maybe asking me now, honestly, would you buy it again? I would say probably no. Why? Because like I said, there is for just 20 additional bucks, the MX RGB blue version with the wrist rest. And I think it's definitely worth the extra cost. Okay, maybe the wrist rest after all isn't because I got so used to this softer wrist rest that I don't need it so much, but I would definitely prefer some different lighting at some points. And that's why I would go for there. And this is all I can say. Functionality is there, build quality is there. I like this powerful software and the negative things as you have seen, can be solved quite easy. So that's all I have to say. All you can do is now leave a comment or a question or something like that. Leave a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I would wish you a nice day. Until next time, bye.